Welcome into my studio. This is the pan pastel extract for my three hour video available on my Patreon art channel. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so that's the lights and the darks. Just, as I said, indicating where they are going to live, just roughly. Now I thought for this dog, for the underlayer, I'd use pan pastels. Lots of people have got pan pastels now or they want to at least see a lesson showing exactly how I use it. And so let me go through it quite detailed. You can't actually see the pans. They are off to the right of the screen. You can just see the shadow um, there. Pan pastels have got, or well, they come in a bit of a holder usually. If you buy the set, uh, like a clear plastic with circles in there, and they just press. You can put the pans and press them in there, and they act kind of like a palette. I've shown this on quite a few other videos, and I've also shown mixing. Um, on of the pans as well but this time I thought I'd keep the image quite large the white that you can see on the right hand side that's just printer paper okay so I'm dabbing into the pans and then I'm rubbing it onto the printer paper you can't really see it well because I'm just using white for now indicating where the rim light is the edge light in here but you'll see as I continue how I actually mix on that printer paper. Why do I use printer paper? As, as, it, as I've explained in many of my videos, it's just because it's a slippery surface. Um, if you use something like a piece of plastic, that'd be a bit, I found that's too slippery and it doesn't hold the pastel at all. But printer paper is shiny, it's um, white as well, and it just holds that pigment enough so that I can mix the colors into it okay that's why I've just got regular printer papers nothing special about it at all now I'm going to start mixing some colors on there so you'll be able to see it just a little bit more because as I come down the head and onto the bridge of the nose it's not quite a pure white now it's important to know that areas that need to be very white like this stripe coming down the forehead as I said onto the bridge of the nose that needs to be almost pure white so I don't want to get anything really dark there as an underlayer okay this is just slightly off white now if I went too dark I wouldn't be able to get the brightness of the white on top especially in the areas on the forehead um, down onto the nose that are very very bright so don't put anything dark under there if you find you go too dark you can remove a lot of the pastel you could do it with a stiff brush you could do it with a putty eraser anything like that uh, to get the under layer off so you could get the the brightness back now the beauty of pan pastels is that the underlayer can be done really quite quickly and what I'm after here is more about tonal values and the general color I'll adjust it all of this refine it as I come on top with my pencils you can see more often than not I'm going in the fur direction it's not hypercritical at this stage in some of the areas like the white stripe doesn't really matter it's not a great deal of detail there but other areas around the cheek the side of the nose where it's brown and I'm going to start working around those areas now that's where you really want to get the um, colors quite accurate and as you apply it with pan pastels then be going in the direction of the fur, the way the fur is lying on the um, musculature and, and uh, bones that's underneath the top fur that we see and that's what's giving the shape and form. So I'm just adding some brown in there. I've got a small strip of pastel matte paper, the same colour that I'm using. I'm just testing my colours on there. My reference photo is off screen. Now I've got a 45 minute free video showing exactly how I match colors. That's what you need to um, 
be working towards not me telling you exact colors because I used lots and lots of pencils and quite a few pan pastels as well for this particular drawing. So you need to be able to work out on your more easy beginner projects first exactly how to pick a color, how to get accurate colors, how to select them correctly, get the tonal value, that's the lights and the darks, correct and accurate. You need to be able to, to do that to be able to then draw and paint because it's just the same as we're painting anything that you want. Now another benefit of this printer paper is it's not um, allowing me to put lots and lots too much pan pastel down. The very act of rubbing it on that surface just as I'm doing, see those circular motions as I'm trying to get my colors accurate and then testing them out. That's removing quite a bit of the pastel, the pan pastel from that um, sponge tool. So that's making sure that I'm not oversaturating the, the surface of the paper with pan pastel. If I put down too much pan pastel down, or perhaps if I was using sticks, if I put too much down, or even pencils, I won't be able to get my details on top. And that's the critical part. You just want to put enough down to get the color and the tone that you want and no more. There's no reason to be super saturated in this with pastel. And if I was just dipping into the pan pastel with the tool and then going straight to my pastel mat paper that's a, you know, the, that's the way you would then very likely to um, put too much pastel down. So I'm using the printer paper as my palette, as my mixing palette. And you see as well, I'm not just mixing in one area. I've got lots of different areas now so that I can judge one area by the other. And also I can then dip back into those areas of the bits that I've mixed. You can see the drawing, that line drawing that I did, you can see it through this pan pastel. So that's how you know you're not putting too much down. If it's really covering it all up completely, you've got too much pan pastel on there for this stage. Now, I use the light blue paper because as you can see, it's not particularly blue, it's more of a gray but it's a mid-tone and by being a mid-tone those darks showed up when I put those down and the lights showed up as well. So it's really helping me to judge the tonal values and also the colors that I'm putting on there. Now this drawing took around about 4 hours 50 minutes I think not that it's a race or anything, but I know some people want to become pet portrait artists. And if you're doing it professionally, time is of the essence because the longer it takes you, the more you really need to charge. And that's the thing I love about uh, pastels, especially when they combined um, pan pastels and pastel pencils. By combining the two, you can really do something quite quickly and have it very detailed as well. Now I'm going to carry on with a few more of the whites and the browns and then I'll slow it down again the video when I start putting in some more of the darks.
Okay, so you can see it's quite very basic and almost childlike at this stage because none of the details are in there. So I've just dipped into the dark, into the black. Now bear in mind that Pan Pastel's black is not completely opaque. Okay, now that's an advantage at this stage because I can still see the pencil marks that I've got down on there, pretty much anyway. It's not covering them up completely. On some drawings, you want the darks to be super, super black. You want that full tonal range. So then I normally go over the top of it with something darker, even darker than this black. I know it looks black on the screen, but it's not particularly dark black. And I would use something like a Creta Color chalk or a new pastel stick, something like that. But for this drawing, I don't need to go incredibly dark black anyway. And so this is working really well. Now, as you can see, you can use these sponge tools to kind of like just smudge out. You see, if I don't want it to be particularly dark, just the residue that's left on the tool itself is dark enough. You see I'm going in that fur direction. I know I need highlights and more darks to go here. I'm just kind of tinting the paper almost. And as I said, just using kind of a, it's, it's almost like a, a dirty sponge really, just to put some light um, touches in for the darks. And now I've already got that dark in. You can see that straight away is starting to look more three dimensional because we've got that tonal range starting to, to come into play. We've already got a bright white on that stripe coming down the forehead. And now we're getting the dark in place. So that's giving me that full tonal range from my darkest darks all the way to my lightest lights. And that's made much easier by using that toned paper, that light blue paper. Now expect the sponges to wear out quite quickly. Pastel matte paper is quite forgiving and gentle to our fingers and to the pastel uh, sponges when compared to something like a sanded paper. You wouldn't be able to do this on sandpaper. You just rip the sponge to pieces instantly. But even so, these sponges are delicate. So I'm not pushing hard when I'm using them, but they will still wear out. You will see little particles coming off them that you can just blow away. And don't forget, you then turn the sponge around when it's of no use and not worn out and use the other side. But they will wear out no matter what you do to them. Now you don't have to use this shaped sponge. You can also use the small stick ones that are like a, a small makeup applicator. They kind of last a little bit longer. The tips are very similar to this, uh, pointy at the top, and I could have just used those instead. As I said, they seem to last quite a bit longer than these. And then if you're doing a large area, you can um, use the real large sponges and they last a long, long time. Okay, they don't, because they're not as delicate as this, they don't um, just break up. But only really suitable for large areas. So see, I'm just indicating where the darks are going to go, not putting much pastel down, making a map, an underlay a map, so that I can follow and refine it on top. That's what it's all about, making it easy for myself. Not trying to jump straight in with details and you know the difficult parts, trying to get everything right straight away. This way, what I'm doing is really just kind of indicating where these darks are going to go and refining that just tonal 
drawing that I did initially, the, the black and white drawing that I did. And once again, I'm just going to carry on this process and then after that I'll use pan pastels again and put the background in. Okay, so on to the background. Now it's a very dark background, which is good because that's giving us a nice dark background which makes the lights on the dog look that much brighter, giving a good lighting effect. You can see immediately that I put that on, that's creating the highlight around the top of the ear. Just put some green in there as I'm coming towards the right hand side. Small circular strokes as I'm applying it. Instantly the dog is now starting to look like it's coming forwards in the drawing and the background is receding. Now I could have just completed the dog and then put the background in last but you can clearly see that by putting at least some of this background in because on many of my drawings you'll see me just put a small amount in but on this drawing because it's not particularly large um, and the background is quite simple I'll, I'll put that in straight away but you could just put a little bit around the edges if you wanted to and that just like that would um, indicate to you how the dog is going to work with the background. It's difficult if you don't have any background at all in to judge your colours and your tonal values really accurately because the background normally plays an important part especially in the type of lighting effects that I like. I usually like to have dramatic lighting so the background is usually either very dark or very light and the subject is normally kind of the opposite to it so it really they really stand out from each other as I'm working down here you can see I'm using a more vibrant green 
and all I'm doing is just dipping into the pans now sometimes I'm mixing them on the paper but with the background we don't really have to worry so much about um, putting too much pastel down because with the background what you want especially in a background like this at least is a nice soft smooth looking background and that actually requires quite a bit of pastel and because there's no details going on top I don't have to be concerned about oversaturating and filling the two for the paper because all I'm going to put on top of it would be more pan pastels anyway so there's not going to be any pencils used on the background and I'm going to continue that technique now working my way all around the background with these circular motions Okay, so hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember, there's a long three hour version going into all the details of this over on my Patreon art channel. Hundreds and hundreds of hours worth of other videos as well. If you check out the end of this video, you'll see a quick look at it. Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos oil videos as well and those videos are being added to new ones every single month i have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies and i take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings i've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices. And I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well. And this particular elephant video spans six hours. So you know you're going to see tons and tons of details, tips and techniques. And as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too. So there really is something for everybody and you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just four dollars now over a thousand members strong hope to see you there soon